In this video, we're going to make a nice simple inventory system. This is a very simple class that lets us store unique and stackable items. We can spawn them in the world, pick them up, use them and drop them. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here's what we want to create. Over here is my player and I can simply move him around. Then in here in the UI, you can see my current inventory. So I'm carrying a sword, a health potion and a mana potion. Scattered throughout the map, you can see a bunch of items on the floor. Now if I move, I can pick up, there you go. When I picked it up, it was added into my inventory. As you can see, some items are stackable and some are not. So if I grab this sword, there you go, that one is not stackable. As you can see in here is a 10 coin. There you go, I've got 10 coins now, 11, 12, 13, yep. Then in the inventory, I can right click in order to drop an item. And I can also left click to use them. So over here, the mana potion, left click, and there you go, I used a mana potion and I've used a health potion. So just like that, we have a very nice and very functional inventory class. So click, drop, and so on, and we can do anything. All right, awesome. So this is our goal, let's get to it. So over here is my starting scene. I just have the player walking around and nothing else. Okay, let's begin making our inventory class. Here we make a new c -sharp script. Let's call this the inventory and open it up. Now in here, let's first get rid of mono behavior since this will be a simple class. And now in here, we're going to have a very simple list of items. So that means we need to define our item type. So here back in the editor, let's create another script. This will be our item. And again, get rid of mono behavior. Okay, in here, very simple. We just define a public enum of our item type. Here, let's put some items. And then in the item class itself, we simply have a item type field and also a int for the amount. All right, here's our very simple item class. Now we can go back into the inventory and in here we make a list of items and on the constructor we simply initialize the list. Okay, that should do it. Let's do a debug.log just for testing. Just like that, okay. Now let's see how we're going to test this. Let's go into the player class. Okay, here it is. The rest of the code is irrelevant for our case here. All we care about is the inventory. So over here on the awake, let's simply instantiate our inventory. So up here, define a field. And here we simply do new inventory. All right, let's test. And there it is, we have the inventory in the console, so everything's working right. Okay, so far so good. Now here in the inventory, let's make a function to add an item. In order to add, we simply add it to the list. Item list, add our item. And now for testing, when we start, let's add an item onto it. So let's call add item. Inside we create a new item. Let's say it's a weapon type sword and amount just one. And just like that. Then let's do a debug.log on the item list count. Okay, so we should be able to add an item to our list and be able to see a one. And yep, there it is, we have one item inside of our inventory. Okay, great. Now let's make a visual for the inventory. So over here inside my game handler, I have the UI and inside I have the canvas. So in here, let's start off by making an empty game object. Call this the UI inventory. Now inside with a background. Now let's make a container game object for the item slot container. So this is where we're going to fill up with all our item slots. And then inside, let's make the game object for each inventory slot. Okay. 
Okay, so here's the item slot template. So this is the game object that we're going to duplicate in order to show all of our items. So for the template, we're going to start off as hidden. Okay, so that's it for the UI setup. As you can see, very simple, just a background, a container, and a template. Now let's make the code to handle this. So a new c -sharp script, I'm going to call this the UI inventory. This when we drag it in here, okay. Now in here, the first thing we're going to need is a reference to our inventory. So let's make a function to receive it. Okay, now we need to call this from somewhere. So let's go onto our player. And in here, let's add a serialized field for our UI inventory. So we can now go back into the editor. And here with the player selected, there it is, there's the field and just drag the script onto it, okay. And then here in the player, we create the inventory and then we go into the UI inventory and call set the inventory and pass in this one, all right. So we are passing in the inventory object onto our UI script. Okay, so far so good. Now on the inventory window, in here let's make a function to display the items. Okay, so first on awake, we grab all of our references. And now here, let's make our function. And now here we need to cycle through all the items in the inventory. So we need to go into our inventory. And here we need to expose our item list. Okay, now we can go back into the UI and here we can cycle through it. And now here, all we need to do is instantiate our template. And now the template is disabled. So the first thing we need to do is call game object and set this one to active so that it's visible. Okay. Then we need to position it. Okay, so here we have some code in order to locate all our item slots in a grid array. So just like this, we should be able to see the window correctly display how many items are in our inventory. Now we need this to call this function in here. So let's go into our inventory and add a couple more. So we have a sword, let's add a health potion and a mana potion. Okay, so we should be able to see three items total. Let's see. And yep, there it is, we have our nice three items. All right, awesome. Now, obviously, let's set the proper visuals. So for that, let's make a class that will hold a reference to all the assets that we need. So in here, we make a new class. Let's call this the item assets. In here, let's make this a singleton. So we have a nice static field to access this script. And in here, we add all our assets. All right, here we have all our assets. Now we can go into the item class and in here we can make a get sprite function. So inside all we do is a switch on our item type and depending on the type we'll return the asset. All right, that's it. Now we can ask the item in order to give us the sprite. So we can go back into the UI inventory. Here we are placing the thing, okay, great. And now let's go into the item slot in order to find the image. And we simply set the image dot sprite and we go into the item and we get the sprite. All right. Okay, so now we go into the editor in order to add our sprites. Here in the editor, let's make an empty game object for our item assets. And we drag our script onto it. And now in here we drag all our sprites. Okay, just like that. So let's test. And yep, there it is, we have the three items displaying with the three different sprites. Awesome. Okay, now let's make some items in the world that we can pick up by moving our player. So here in the editor, let's begin with an empty game object. Let's call this the item world. Inside, let's add a sprite render. Let's just drag something onto there, okay. And now let's also add a box collider 2D. And we want to make this a trigger. And finally, let's also add a rigid body 2D and make sure that gravity is disabled. All right. Okay, so here we have our item. And if we run the game, yep, there you go, there's the visual for our item on the ground. Okay, so now let's make this into a prefab so we can instantiate it. 
So first let's create a folder for our prefabs, keep things nice and organized, and we drag the item world onto it, and let's rename this to PF item world. Okay, so now we have our nice prefab. Now let's make a script to handle it. So a new script, let's call this the item world and drag it onto our prefab. Now in here, let's make a function to set the item that this item world is carrying. So a public void, call it set item and we receive an item. Okay, and let's also make a static function to instantiate a new item world. So here we instantiate, that means that we need a reference for our prefab. So again, we can use the item assets. In here, we just add a public transform for our item world prefab. And then here on the item world, we can instantiate that one. Okay, we instantiate our transform, then we get the component of type item world, and we call set item and we pass in this item. All right. So just like that, over here we have a nice static function to spawn items into our world. And here when you have the set item, let's also set our sprite. So here we do the same thing, we ask the item in order to return the sprite. All right. Now let's go to the player in order to test this. So here, just for testing, let's call item world and we call the function to spawn something on the item world and let's spawn three items. Okay, let's test. And yep, there's our items being spawned in the world. Awesome. Now, just for fun, let's add some lights to the prefab and color them depending on the type. And yep, there it is. Now our items have some nice lights. Okay, great. So now let's see how we can grab them. Over here on the item world prefab, we added a nice box collider and we made it a trigger. So in the player, we can use that. Over here in the player, let's do a on trigger enter 2D. Now here, let's test if it's an item. So here we are touching the item. And if so, let's add it to our inventory. So go into the inventory and call add item. So now we need to go into the item world and make a function to get the item. And then we also need to go into the item world and make a function to destroy itself. Okay, so here in the item world, make a public item get item. And here we simply return our item. And a public void destroy self and here, let's just destroy this game object. Okay, there it is, very simple, let's test. So here we are, now I approach this health potion and if I go, yep, there you go, the health potion disappeared and it was added to my inventory. Now I'll grab the mana potion and the sword and there you go, I've grabbed them all. All right, great. However, you obviously did see that the inventory did not update, so let's do that. Here in the inventory class, let's make a event to trigger on update. So we have an event on item list changed and here when we add an item, let's trigger this event. Okay, there it is, we have our event. Now we can go into the UI inventory. And now here when we have the set inventory, let's subscribe to this event. So we go into the inventory and subscribe to this. All right. So when the item list changes, we simply refresh it. However, before we test this, we need to make sure that we destroy the old transforms before we build the new ones. So before we do this, Let's go here, go through each transform child inside the container. And now let's make sure we destroy them except the template. So if the child is a template, we simply continue. And if not, we destroy the game object. All right, that should do it. Let's test. 
Okay, here we are. Let's grab the health potion. Yep, there it is. It was added correctly. All right, now for the mana potion. And yep, I grabbed it. And now the sword. And yep, I grabbed it as well. All right, awesome. So now that we have the items being added, let's make a simple way to spawn items in the world by adding them to the hierarchy. So here, let's make a new script. We're going to call this the item world spawner. And inside this script, the only thing we're going to have is a field for a public item. All right, just like this. Now, in order for this to show up in the editor, we need to go into our item. And in this class, we need to mark it as serializable which is inside the using system. All right, so we need to make sure that this is serializable in order to show up in the editor. So let's see how it looks. In here, let's make a new item world spawner and drag the script onto it. And yep, there you go. As you can see, we have a field for an item and we can pick. Let's also add a sprite render just so we can see. So let's try putting a sword in there. Okay, so here it is. I made a bunch of game objects. Each of them has the Atom World Spawn script and just a sprite in order to display it. And now back in this script, in here, so we have the field for the item. Then let's make our private void awake. And on awake, all we want to do is spawn this item. So we go into the item world and we call spawn the item world onto this position and with this item. So we spawn it and then we destroy this game object. Now we can go back into our player and here we can remove our testing code. So no longer spawn these through here. Okay, let's test. And yep, there it is. All our final items were correctly spawned. So we can pause and we can look and see that the item spawners were destroyed and they were replaced with actual items in the world. All right, great. So now with all of this working nicely and we can still pick them up and see the inventory update. Okay, now let's deal with stackable items. Over here in the item class, let's make another function let's make a public ball is stackable so over here we ask if the item is stackable so the coins health potions and mana potions are stackable and swords and medkits are not so now let's go into our inventory and in here when we add an item instead of always doing this let's test if this item is stackable so if it is stackable, we're going to have some logic. And if it is not stackable, then we just add it like normal. Okay, so if it is stackable, let's check if this item type already exists in the inventory. So if they are already of the same item type, then we simply add the amount instead. So just like that. And if they aren't already placed, so in here, if the item is not already in the inventory, then we simply add it. Okay, just like that, very simple. Okay, now let's quickly test. So here I already have a health potion in my inventory. So if I grab this one, it should not spawn a new one. And yep, there you go, it didn't spawn. All right, great. So the logic is working. Now we just need a display in order to know how many amount we have in there. So let's go to our UI inventory. Let's inspect our template. And in here, let's add a new text object. So here we have the amount text. And now here on the UI, let's instantiate our item slot. Okay, in here. So we set the anchored position, set the image. Now let's also set the text. So here we set the text based on the item.amount. However, let's also hide the text if it, the amount is only one. So let's do an if. All right, so if we have more than one, we show the amount. If not, then we just show an empty text. Okay, that should do it. Let's test. Okay, here we are, and here are a bunch of our items. So we already have a sword, a health potion, and a mana potion. We only have one of each, so that's why the text is invisible. Now let's grab this health potion. And yep, there you go. Now it says two, grab the mana. And there you go, it went in there. Now grab the first coin, and there's the first coin. And grab, and now a two, a three, and a four. Now these two are not stackable, so grab the sword. There you go, there's the sword, and there's a the medkit. So just like that, we have made our inventory support stackable items. Awesome. Now that we have this, let's also add an amount to the world items. 
So let's go here into the item world prefab and let's also add a text object. So here it is, just like that. Now let's go to the script. Here in the atom world script, we set the atom. Now let's also set the text. All right, here it is. We did the exact same thing, only show if it's above what. So now in here, let's make one of these coins actually hold not just one coin, let's say 10 coins. Okay, let's see. And yep, here we are, and there it is, that one has 10 coins. Now I move around, let's grab the sword, there you go, we got the sword, got that, we got another health potion, another mana. Now let's grab the 10 coins first, and there you go, we have 10 coins, now 11, 12, and 13. All right, great. Now let's add the ability to use and drop our items. So let's go here into our UI, into our item slot template, and now in order to capture clicks, let's use the button UI component, which is part of the CodeMuck utilities. As always, you can download the utilities for free from unitycodemuck.com, this is a very simple script that just lets us easily set actions for left and right click. So let's go into the UI. So here, let's go to our button UI. Okay, so here we can set an action for the left click and the right click. Now on the right click, let's drop our item. And on the left click, we're going to use our item. So first the drop, it's very simple. We just need to remove it from the inventory and spawn it in the world. So let's go to the inventory and call remove item. So we have to make that function and we pass in our item. And then let's go into the item world. And here we're going to make a similar function and let's call it drop item. So first let's make the remove item. So on the inventory here, it's very simple. Okay, so here we're just doing very similar to the add, except instead of increasing, we decrease the amount and we remove it from the item list. So now we need to make the drop item function. Now we need to know the position of where we're going to drop it. So that means here on the Y, we need to know where the player is. So we have a function to set the player and then we drop the item using the player, okay? This is just so we can have a drop position. All right, so we have a nice drop item function. It simply spawns it in the world and pushes it away. Okay, with all of this, it should be working. And now we should be able to right click in order to drop items from our inventory. Okay, here we are. Now I right click and yep, there you go. I dropped the item. Okay, so it looks good. But now we actually have one tiny issue, which is let's grab the item that we just dropped and now grab another one. And there you go. It is now no longer correctly saying two. And if I drop it, there you go. It's just one. It no longer has two. So let's see why this is happening. So here, if I already have one, grab another one, grab two. Now I drop it and yep, it just dropped one. So let's see what is going on. The issue is that here, when we call remove item, we're passing in this item reference. And then in here, we're taking this item, which also matches this item, and we're decreasing this amount, which in turn also ends up decreasing this amount. So the issue here is because we are modifying the exact same item reference. So the solution in here is to make a duplicate item. So we make our new item then we remove it from the inventory and we make sure that we dropped what we had previously. So in here we drop the duplicate. This is an issue related to the fact that we made item a class. We could have made this a struct in order to avoid this item, but that depends on what type of game you're making, whether it's suitable in order to make a struct or a class. So in this case with a class, you have this problem and let's see if this solution works. Okay, so here we are with one, now grab another one, now drop, and there you go, now we drop two. So now we grab that one and we grab two. So grab this and this and so on, and we can grab everything and now drop 13 coins, two health potions and two mana potions. All right, great. So now with this working, let's make the use function. Over here, we have our left click function, all right. Now in here, let's call use on this item in the inventory. So we go into the inventory and let's make a function called use item. 
and we pass in this item. So let's make this. Down here we make a public void use item and we receive an item. So now here we need to use it and we want to use it on the player. But in here we don't want to have a direct reference to the player. So instead let's make a action that takes an item and let's call this the use item action. And we receive this on the constructor. And then down here we use this. Just like that, okay? Now an action is just a void delegate. So in this case with an item as a parameter. So now on the player, when we create our new inventory, we need to pass in that function. So let's make it in here. And we pass in this function onto our inventory. So now we have this function on our player that we can use to do whatever we want with our item. So let's do a switch. Okay, so here on this function, we are doing a switch on the item type and let's add some behavior for the health and mana potion. So if we have a health potion, let's flash our character green in order to indicate a healing. And then we go into the inventory and we remove an item of type health potion and just one amount. Then the same thing for the mana potion. So let's see if we can click to use our items. Okay, here we are. Let's grab a health potion. Okay, we have two health and one mana. Let's use the mana. And there you go. You saw it flash in blue. Now let's left click on the health potion. It should flash in green and we should have instead of two, just one. Click. And yep, there you go, we have our flash and went from two down to one. Click again, and there you go, it's gone. Now grab this one, click, and there you go, very nice. And this one doesn't have any behavior, so it doesn't do anything. Same thing for the coins, also no behavior, and the medkit, also no behavior. So we can now use objects inside our inventory in order to trigger custom logic. Awesome! And just like that, we have our completed inventory system. We have the inventory being instantiated inside our player and displayed over here in the UI. We have a nice item class that defines all the items and their behavior. So each item has a unique sprite, which is based on its type and also an amount. We can spawn items in the world and move around them in order to pick them up. Then on the inventory, we can right click in order to drop an item or left click to use it. And we can pick them all up and everything looks very nice. The way we set up our inventory class, it would be very easy to apply this to other units rather than just the player. So if you wanted each enemy to have an inventory, you would just instantiate the inventory class like we did, and just like that the enemy would hold an inventory that, for example, it could drop on that. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.